Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. How are you today? Hope you're having a good day. Well, I saw an article. Actually, a friend sent it to me, Miss Carolyn, down there in Fort Lauderdale. She said, uh, take a look at this article. It says, nearly one quarter of Americans say they plan to never retire. Oh, it's interesting. Uh, so there was a poll done here by the Associated Press's NORC Center for the Public Affair Research Center. Sounds official, right? So they said that 23% um, of workers and 2 in 10 people over the age of 50 said that they never expect to stop working, right? So 23% of everybody, but then if you break it down by age, 2 in 10 people that are over the age of 50 think that they will never have to stop working. I like it. That's ambitious. <laughs> I like it, right? So it's not realistic. You're eventually going to get hurt, sick, slow down, right? We all age, and so you're eventually going to have to retire. If you look at the recent uh, the government uh, jobs data number, I can't think of, I just don't know why I said it that way, but uh, one in five people over the age of 65 are currently actively looking for a job. So it's not that everybody's just saying, ah, you know, I'm going to work forever. One in five actively looking for a job. So what I thought was, how do we elaborate on this and help those that are saying, I'm not going to stop working because I don't have enough money to stop working. How do we come up with a plan for someone who's 50 and says, you know what? I took that questionnaire and I said, I don't plan to stop working. But what they didn't tell you is it's because I'm broke. I don't have that much money. Got a little 401k and maybe I'll get some social security. I don't even know if I'm going to have enough. Here we go. Let's dive into it here. So I'm going to try to explain this a little bit because this is very similar to the video I did at $28 a week or whatever gets you to the, the you know, the uh, 600 and some thousand dollars. And yeah, you get to live on $80,000 a year the rest of your life. Highly misunderstood video, by the way. So I'm going to try to expand on that today. Here we go. We're going to say we've got somebody who is 50 years old. They were a participant in that questionnaire and they said, they, you know, hey, I can't retire because I don't have enough money. We are going to say that because of that, if we poked and prodded and said, okay, but if you had to retire, when are you going to retire? Give me an idea of when you would actually stop if you knew you had enough money that you could stop. And let's say that person goes, well, I'm 70, right? So I've got 20 years left. That's, a, that's the number of a person that says, I'm going to work a long time, right? So we're going to say, all right, if you could retire, you can retire at 70. All right, you're 50 years old now. How much money do you currently have in any investments? 401ks, IRAs, royalties, equities in a home, a rental property, anything that you have. We're just going to say it's $50,000. This would be on the low end. Don't kick yourself if you don't have $50,000. I'm just using an average here just to sort of go about, uh, about this. All right, because you're 50 and you haven't saved a whole lot, how much would you like from the age of 70 in today's dollars, how much money would you like to live on from age 70 to say 87? We'll assume you, you pass away at 88 years old or whatever. Um, what is that number? Now, most people, when they're older and they haven't saved a lot of money, they tend to shoot a little bit low. So I'm going to say that $40,000 a year would do the trick in terms of income, right? Always calculate your number in terms of income. Just saying I am going to save up a million dollars doesn't help anybody, right? And I'm going to show you in a second why it doesn't really matter anyways. Okay, we have $50,000. We'd love to have 40,000. We think we're gonna have to work forever, but Dustin, if you're gonna work some magic, I guess I'll retire at 70. Okay, Social Security. If you've already worked your whole life and you plan to work forever, well, anyways, how much in Social Security do you expect? I'm gonna shoot low here and I'm gonna say $20,000 a year in Social Security, right? Some of you may think that's high. I have to use an average, I gotta pick something, right? So I'm gonna use $20,000 a year. Now, I'm going to say, that this, we're just going to call this other income, right? I always do it in all these videos. You can count some of it as Social Security. Some of it can be rental income. Maybe your kids are going to give you $100 a month or somebody's paying you something. Either way, I'm going to assume that that is taxable. Just to make it a little bit harder on you. And I'm going to say it's taxable at 25%. Maybe none of it's taxable. I don't know. Whatever this $20,000 is, I'm going to assume it's taxable at 25% to make this equation a little bit harder on you. All right? So far, so good, right? 
50 to 70 years old. We've got 50,000 already. We expect or would love to have $40,000 a year in income. We're gonna say that we have 20,000 expected from other sources, social security, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's all taxable. I know, right? Don't kill me below. Just, we're gonna use 25%, stick with me here. And we're gonna say, um, you're 50 years old now. You've got 20 years until you retire. You can invest in such a way where you're shooting for 7% growth. Here's the kicker. I'm about to spit out a number to you and I'm going to suggest you adjust that number for inflation as you go, right? So this 7% is extremely low with the way we're calculating this number. I will try to explain so you don't hurt me, <laughs> all right? Okay, here we go. So in this scenario, if we do it this way, this 50 year old has to save in the next 12 months, from today, the day that you're watching this, in the next 12 months, they have to save $6,481 somehow to get started. That's not so bad, right? All of a sudden you look at that and you go, okay, well, I, I thought I'd have to put away tons of money. Turns out I've only got to put 6,481. Here's the kicker. You're not gonna do that every year. You are going to raise it by 3% a year or whatever inflation is. If it's 2.2, yay. If it's four, yay, or not yay, but whatever it is, you're going to raise it by inflation. What does this do? You know how they say the stock market, the S&P averages 9.8% returns over its entire lifespan. The average return is 9.8% if you were to take it from literally day one until last, the December of last year, 9.8%. Um, that's with dividends and everything. Everybody says 7% because they're like, I'll back out some inflation, right? And then just sort of round down, let's call it 7%. If we factor inflation along the way, we no longer have to back out inflation. We could put that number at 9.8% if we wanted to. In the $28 a week video, I said 10% returns. Now I thought it was a little high. I don't ever like to shoot at the top of the number there, but could you? You absolutely could and be perfectly fine in doing that if you factor inflation along the way. I love doing it this way because we know what inflation is as it happens. We can't guess what it's gonna be in the future. So this makes for a much tighter number. So anyways, this person at 50 years old can afford to be aggressive, but we're lowering that number just so it makes the equation harder. They have $50,000 already. They want 40,000 a year. We're gonna get 20,000 from somewhere else. And to make it harder, we're gonna tax it at 25% so that this number is actually higher. We now have to put in 6481 in the next 12 months. We've gotta raise it each year by 3%. Uh, someone should bug you to do that or whatever inflation is, you gotta raise it. And when this person gets to retirement, they would have put in a total uh, let's see, 166,000. I'm not going to write it because I'm out of space. They had to put in $166,000 in total contributions, including the money that they already had. They will have, check this out, when they get to retirement in future dollars, right? They will have a total of 551,293. That's it. And I don't say that to be disrespectful. I say that because do you notice how many people say you have to save a million dollars, two million dollars? Oh my gosh, you're never going to get there. That makes you feel pretty bad about yourself. Here is an example of someone who took this questionnaire and right, and they're like, I'm never going to stop working. And we were able to pull them out of this dark cloud of life that thinks they're never going to be able to stop working and say, hey, if you want to retire at 70, you need to put away $6,481. You know what happens when you tell somebody that? They go, wow, I, you know, I, I think I can do that. Not everybody can, but they go, you know, I think I can do that. And then they go, hey, Dustin, what if I want to retire at 68, right? Now we're thinking, now they're positive and they're going, this is a real opportunity. I may not have to work the rest of my life. Okay, Dustin, run 68. Everybody that joins us here at Jazz Wealth, I run you through these numbers. And of course, we could play with them as many times as you like, but uh, let's do 68. So if I change the number to 68, the new, this up here, the retirement age goes to 68. Now, all of a sudden, instead of 6481, it's not that bad. You get a total of 8826. I don't have to write it. You, got, you know what I'm doing, right? <laughs> 8826. So we went from 6681 to 8826. Also not too bad. If you're serious about it and you're really going to try to sock away some money, take a little tax return money, take a little bit of savings. You know what I mean? You're going to go for it. If you have a 401k at work, 
A lot of that's going to be taken care of for you. If you make 40000 already and you get a 3% match, that's $1,200 plus $1,200. There's $2,400 knocked off right there. So it just, I wanted to kind of share with you that, you know, I get why people answered the survey the way they did. If we could all just have old Dustin calculate the number for you or your financial advisor, whoever you're working with, oh, what a weight that lifts off your shoulders. You realize what's possible and what is maybe wishful thinking or where you need to tweak your number a little bit. That's all I have for you, okay? I just wanted to share that with you. I like to keep things positive on this channel and I saw a pretty negative article and thought, well, how do we make people feel like there's a possibility here? And that's how I did it today. If you liked it, maybe you'll hit the subscribe button or thumbs up button. That does something when you hit the thumbs up button or thumbs down. Uh, either way is okay with me. We'll be back later. We're going to do the um, Closing Beat show. Every day at 5 o'clock, we do a stock market update show. Um, we put a lot of attention into it and sort of a lot to go over what happened with your investments. And if you have questions about any particular investment that had a good or bad day, we're happy to help you there as well. Uh, so I hope you'll check it out live on the YouTube channel, Jazz Wealth. Uh, at five o'clock. See you then. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.